What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name's Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and every once in a while I'll throw in other whiskey related content. Today we're doing a list. I wanna share with you guys 10 great cast strength whiskeys. Stick around. So it's a list today. We're going through 10 great cast strength whiskeys. Us whiskey nerds, of course, love our cast strength whiskeys. More alcohol, more flavor. And tell you what, there's a lot of really good cast strength whiskeys out there. I've got 10 whiskeys for you guys today. Uh, I don't want to call it a top 10. I won't be including stuff like IBs, which might otherwise dominate the list. And I've just had too many good cast strength whiskeys over the years, half of which I'm sure I've forgotten. So I do want to stop short of calling it a top 10 list, but it's just 10 great cast strength whiskeys that I thoroughly enjoy. It's an incomplete list, and these are just the 10 whiskeys that popped into my head while I was making notes for this video, and that'll have to do. Of course, your list might be different. Feel free to let me know your choices down below in the comments. Let me know if you feel like I left anything out. Uh, as usual, I've got a mystery pour in my glass here. It is a fantastic whiskey. I wish I could include it on the list, but I didn't, and I'll explain why later. Um, and I guess that's it. That's our basis covered. Let's jump into the list. Here are 10 great cast strength whiskeys. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. We'll kick things off with some honorable mentions. I want to start things off with Edra Dower. Now you can go for the straight from the cast stuff and those little wooden boxes, or you can go with the Ibisco decanters. They do specialize in sherried whiskey and they have some proper sherry bombs. They also have some good bourbon options out there, but anything Edra Dower should fit the bill. Another solid pick is the Glen Scotia Victoriana, which is very popular right now. Uh, stuff like the Diageo special releases, I think are getting a little bit too expensive and a little bit too much for the collectors but they do undeniably have some fantastic cast strength whiskeys out there. Stuff like the Obens, the Taliskers, the Lagavulins, all excellent, solid choices. All right, so kicking things off at number 10, we've got Tamdu Batch Strength. Now this is a very popular whiskey. The last one I had was batch number five, and I think we're up to batch seven now. So I can't speak to the quality of the latest releases, but I would imagine it's still excellent stuff. Uh, batch five at least was rich, full-bodied, intense. It was perfect for you sherry bomb lovers out there. Didn't disappoint, so at number 10, Tamdu Batch Strength. At number nine, we've got Highland Park Cast Strength. Now this is an absolute beast of a whiskey. The last one I had was batch one. We're up to batch three now. I hear that the later batches are getting a little bit softer and a little bit more rounded, but batch one was rugged. Uh, it is a beast of a whiskey. It does calm down with water, and I mean quite a bit of water, but damn, it's punchy. And I do actually like how punchy it is. Like, it's definitely the most rugged Highland Park from the main line. I find that kind of charming. I think that's endearing about the whiskey, but it won't be for a lot of you. And again, add water as needed. Feel free to add a bunch. It can, it can swim. Uh, but we have the classic Highland Park flavors in there. We have that heathery peat. We have some nice lush sherry. It's a fantastic whiskey. Number nine, Highland Park cast strength. For number eight, we're cheating a little bit. I'm giving you a couple of Ardbegs here. One is gonna be the Cory Vrecken and the other one is the Ugadal. Now the Cory Vrecken is the one to go for if you want your straight up peat monster, your peat bomb. If you want something with a slightly more sherry touch and maybe a little bit softer around the edges, go for the Ugadal. These are both really good whiskeys. They're classic Ardbegs. I've been enjoying both for at least a dozen years now. There is a lot of discussion out there about how they're not quite where they used to be, particularly the Ugadal. And yeah, that's true, but they're still really good and they're still worth recommending. So at number eight, Ardbeg, Ugadal, and Cory Vrecken. Next up, we're coming back around to a sherry bomb. This one is the Glendronic Cast Strength. Now, I'm not gonna lie, these whiskeys were not very good for quite a long time, but batch number 10 is actually an unexpected return to form. It's really good. It's not really reinventing the wheel in any way, but it's just a classic flavor-rich, intense sherried whiskey, which is what you want when you sign up for a Glendronic Cast Strength. They do have a batch 11 out. I don't know how that compares to the 10. I haven't had a chance to try it, but batch 10 was fantastic. So coming in at number seven, Glendronic Cast Strength, batch 10. Number six brings us back around to a peat monster. This one is the Laphroaig 10 Cast Strength. This is big, loud, punchy, in your face peat. 
Laphroaig is well known for being one of the peatiest Isla whiskies, and this delivers on that promise. The key word for this one is fun. When you get a cast strength Laphroaig, you're signing up for a lot of intensity and a lot of peat. It might not be the most complex or layered whiskey out there, but it is just loads of fun and it's got loads of flavor. So number six, Laphroaig cast strength. At number five, we've got something that's sure to be the least famous whiskey on this list. I'm talking about Bladnuck Leora. This is something I only came across very recently. It's really good stuff. Unlike what you'll find on the rest of this list, this is neither heavily peated nor is it heavily sherried. It's mostly bourbon matured. I wish we got more cast strength bourbon matured whiskeys like this. Super good. We get some great yeasty flavors in here. Bladnuck has a really distinctive house style. Like it's a very characterful distillate and the high ABV in this whiskey really helps showcase that. Again, it's one of my favorite recent discoveries. Coming in at number five, Bladnuck Leora. Number four is from a brand that's making huge waves in the whiskey industry these days. This one is the Arden American Cast Strength. Now the one I've got is the release from February of last year. I believe there's another one from August of 2022. I have not had that one. Uh, beautiful oily texture. We have some gentle peat and some wonderful tropical fruits. Basically, it's got all the qualities that make this brand so impressive. When you have a sip of this stuff, it's like, okay, that's why people are talking about Arden American. Fantastic whiskey, definitely one to check out. Comes in at number four, Arden American Cast Strength. Next up, we've got a release from another brand that's making a lot of noise in the whiskey industry these days. They're considered the Campbelltown of Speyside. You guys already know what I'm talking about. This is Ben Romick Cast Strength. We get plenty of sherry in here. It's moderately peated. There is kind of like a farmy aspect, which I think helps a lot of people associate it with Springbank. It is somewhat similar to Springbank, but it's also not a substitute for Springbank and it shouldn't be approached as such. It's its own whiskey. It's got its own character and it's a great character. Again, these guys are a brand to watch out for. The Cast Strength is a great showpiece for their line. Check it out. Ben Romick Cast Strength, number three. I think my choice for number two will surprise pretty much nobody. I'm going with the Buna 12 cast strength. I've got the 2022 version. I didn't try the 2021. 2022 is incredible stuff. Uh, it's everything you want from a Buna Haven, which means it's very sherried. It was predominantly matured in Oloroso casks. Now you could call this a sherry bomb, but I think it's different from most sherry bombs in the sense that we still get a lot of that Buna Haven character behind all of the sherry influence. So there's this earthy character, it's slightly coastal, phenomenal stuff, it's rich, it's layered, it's complex, it's spicy. Definitely one to check out if you can still find it. Coming in at number two, Bonnet 12 Cast Strength 2022. At number one, we've got the only non-scotch option on this list. I'm going with the Redbreast 12 Cast Strength. This is a phenomenal Irish whiskey. It is one of the best widely available cast strength whiskeys on the market in my opinion we have that classic irish profile with like these kind of tinny pot still flavors we've got loads of sherry in here there's butterscotch there's lots of complexity it's an incredibly moorish whiskey i can't tell you how much i love this stuff it is a stunner and it comes in at number one Redbreast 12 cast strength all right so that was the list that was 10 great cast strength whiskeys that i'm putting forward to you guys of course I missed some stuff. I'm sure there are plenty of killers out there that I just forgot to mention or just didn't make it onto the list. So again, I do want to hear from you. What are your favorite cast strength whiskeys? Give me your top five, your top 10, whatever. Finally, for those of you who stuck around to find out what my mystery pour is, it is an incredible whiskey. It's probably one of the best whiskeys that I've got on this list, or I think it is the best whiskey that I've got on this list. And I wish I could include it on the list, but I couldn't simply because nobody can buy it. Uh, a lot of you have already figured out what I'm talking about. The whiskey is Springbank 12 Cast Strength. Yes, I am showing off a little bit with this one, uh, but it is such an excellent whiskey. It's one of the best whiskeys that I own, not just among Cast Strength whiskeys. Like this would definitely top the list of Cast Strength whiskeys, but just among the whiskeys that I own, it's one of the best ones. It is that good, but you can't find it anymore. And when I do manage to find it, it's like, what? triple quadruple its original price i'm not paying that so this will likely be my last bottle of this stuff at least for a very long time until the price normalizes a little bit so i've got to savor it and i do have to show it off a little bit 
but I didn't want to include it on the proper list, which is why it got relegated to a mystery pour. Amazing stuff. Springbank 12 cast strength. Sorry. Anyway, I guess that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I do have the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Again, you can put all of your thoughts down below in the comments. And I suppose we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.